So yes guys, we were solving this question. Let's get back to that. Number of shares held by DEF. If you look at the question, it says 100% of the shares. Therefore, the number of shares are complete. So look at what is the company number of shares existing in XYZ. XYZ says the number of shares are 100 rupees each and the total share capital is 20 lakhs. So 20 lakhs of 100 rupees each, that means the total number of shares are 20,000. The total number of shares are 20,000. This is 100%. There is no non controlling interest. Total shares are 20,000 and 100% pattern. Let's look at step 3 then. What is your step 3? Step 3 is analysis of profits. Here we need very important analysis of revaluation. Analysis of reserves. Of XYZ Limited. With respect to. Division. What is your position? The data position is first. Let's analyze. Look back at the question and tell me what are the reserves that you find in XYZ Limited. In XYZ Limited, under other equity, I find two reserves. One is other equity, sorry, other reserves and retained earnings. These are these are the two reserves which I find in XYZ. But apart from that, we have one more reserve which will appear right now in the form of revaluation. So let's first start with revaluation. How many assets are being revalued here? On the date of 1st October, that is your date of acquisition, we are revaluing certain assets. So look at what are the revalued assets out here? The first asset being revalued according to your question is your plant and missionary. Your plant and missionary is revalued on 1st October to 20 lakhs. When is the revaluation happening? On 1st October. So be careful with that. Plant and missionary. Okay. Revaluation is on 1st of October. Okay, so first you need to calculate what is the carrying value on 1st October, then compare it with what is the revalued amount to get the revaluation reserve. So let's start. What is the book value on balance sheet date first of all? Book value on 31st of March. What is the book value on 31st March? Look at the question. Book value on 31st March of plant and missionary in XYZ limited is 13 lakh 50,000. Correct. Now, what was the depreciation on this asset? Already given in the question that they had a depreciation rate of 10% on this. Part B plus add back depreciation at the rate of 10% so that you will get back to what is the value of this at the beginning of the year. I know I should get it on 1st of October but let's first go back to the beginning of the year. Add back depreciation at the rate of 10% which is nothing but 30,000 is after depreciation by 10% so to 10 by 90. So 10 by 90 is the depreciation correct? You know, 10 by 90 only I'll consider. I'll get the depreciation. What is the depreciation then? The depreciation is 1 lakh. Sorry. Depreciation is 15,000. Depreciation is 1 lakh 50,000. Therefore, the written down value at the beginning of the year is 15 lakhs. 
That is what you said at the beginning of the year. When did the Minus depreciation up to up to the date of acquisition. Half of the last year's depreciation. What is full depreciation? 150. What is half? 75,000. If I reduce 70,000, I'll have to 14,000. This 45,000 is your asset on the date of acquisition. Book value. First, to that is 14,000. On that day, what is the real value? I'm reading the asset on this day. is 3 lakhs. Therefore, the increase in value of the asset is 5 lakh 75,000 which should be considered as my valuation service. The evaluation plus Dimensions are straightforward already given to us. So this is plant and missionary. Let's talk about part B. That is other All the risks are given a chart. Let's see check. Following the changes in the fair value as on respective of India's from book value as on 1st October, which are considered in consolidating of balance sheet. So these are change in fair values or the, the increase in fair values. So let us consider them. First one, land and building. Increase in fair value of an asset leads to revaluation surplus of 10 lakhs. Part B, revaluation of inventory. Should also lead to revaluation surplus of one lakh. But there is a liability also which is upward revalued, which will result in revaluation deficit, which is trade payables by one lakh. Trade payables by one lakh, which is negative. Total amount part C total revaluation surplus four items total plant and machinery, land and building, inventory, three tables, five lakh seventy five, ten lakhs, one lakh fifty, and one lakh. Then the answer will be sixteen lakh twenty five thousand. 5,75 plus 10 lakhs is 15,75. 16,75, 17,25 minus 1 lakh is 16,25. So that is your answer of total revaluation surplus. And this revaluation happened on the date of acquisition. So entire amount should be considered as pre-acquisition. It should be only considered as pre-acquisition. This is the first reserve that we analyzed. That is revaluation surplus is 16,25,000 pre-acquisition. Let's look at part B then. What is the next reserve that I have to analyze to identify pre and post acquisition? The next reserve which I have to analyze according to the question, there are two reserves in the balance sheet of XYZ Limited, other reserves and retained earnings. But if you look at, very clearly he's saying that retained earnings of XYZ showed a credit balance of 3 lakhs on 1st April, out of which 10% dividend was paid out on 1st November. Did he say anything regarding other, other reserves? Nothing. Since he said nothing regarding other reserves, 
I will consider that these other reserves were existing at the beginning of the year itself. That means the entire 10 lakhs of other reserves in XYZ should be considered as pre-acquisition reserve. Only retained earnings will have post-acquisition reserves. Let's calculate. Balance sheet date balance of retained earnings is 8 lakh 20. Beginning of the year it was 3 lakhs out of which the dividend was paid. So I'm talking about retained earnings only. There is nothing to be analyzed for other reserves. There is no adjustment at all. Entire amount I'll consider it as pre-acquisition reserve. Always start with balance as on balance sheet date. Balance as on balance sheet date. 31st March. How much was the balance in your balance sheet date? It was 8,20,000. 20,000. Out of this 8,20,000, I'll pull two arrow marks. First arrow mark will represent my balance at the beginning of the year. Balance as on 1st of April at the beginning of the year, this balance was 3 lakhs. But out of this 3 lakhs, during the year in the month of November, they paid dividend of last year at the top of 20 lakhs. On 20 lakhs, if I pay 10% share uh, dividend, last year's dividend paid was after payment of the balance beginning of the year. That means. Seven lakh twenty thousand will be considered as profit. This is my one profit. Don't forget your acquisition is exactly on first October, half of the year. So again, divide this further into two parts. Three lakh sixty and three lakh sixty six six months. So my profit up to date position first over two thousand seven, and the profit after the date of position that is profit from first October to thirty first March. This profit, which has earned after the date of acquisition, is subjected to is subjected to change because of depreciation on revaluation. What is depreciation revaluation? You only give me a depreciation with respect to contention. You upward revaluation and a depreciation of 10%. Correct? How do I calculate depreciation on revaluation? Total year's depreciation already provided on plant and missionary was 1,50,000. What is the second half's depreciation? 75,000. But now the value of the asset is 20 lakhs on 1st October. So how much will I depreciate on 1st October? Calculate and check. 10%. Half year 1 by 2. Minus depreciation already provided this half the year. So 10% on 20 lakhs per half of the year is 1 lakh minus 75,000 already charged as depreciation. So the answer is 25,000. Therefore, after this 3 lakh 35,000. This 3 lakh 35,000 is after uh, sorry, after the acquisition profit, which post acquisition reserve? What is the acquisition reserve? And the acquisition reserve is given up to 1st October. So that includes first 1, 1 lakh plus this 3 lakh 60. That is a total amount of 4 lakh 60, which 
distribution of reserves step 4 distribution of reserves distribution of reserves what do you distribute i distribute both my pre acquisition as well as my reserves how many reserves do we have first one devaluation reserve returns on other reserves put them at place retain earning and lastly other reserves Calculate the amount first. As far as your revaluation reserve is concerned, we already calculated. Go up above and check 16,25,000, which is completely pre acquisition. 16,25,000, completely pre acquisition. Nothing in post acquisition reserves at all. Correct? Moving on. What about retained earnings? 4,60 was pre acquisition reserve and 3,35 was post acquisition reserve. 4,60,35. What about other equity? Other equity in the other reserves in my balance sheet already exist at 10 lakhs. Nothing is given regarding that. So I am assuming that this reserve was a carried forward reserve of last year itself. So nothing in the current year, no post acquisition. Total it out. This will be 30 lakh. 85,000 and 3,35,000. I'll have to distribute the reserves among DEF Limited, who is 100% holding power. Therefore, entire amount of 30,85,000 and 3,35,000 will appear. There is no non controlling interest. There is no controlling interest. My step 5 non controlling interest calculation only won't come. So now my step 5 will have to become cost of control. My step 5 has to become in my cost of control. Let's start. What is the first one? Cost of acquisition. For equipment control, what is the value that you spend? And on date of acquisition, not there, forget about it. Directly, I will compare this. Their value of net assets, their value of net assets, of XYZ. What is your date of cost of acquisition? Go back to your balance sheet and check. In your balance sheet on the asset side, it is already given as 34 lakhs. 34 lakhs. My net assets on the date of acquisition, I will break it down into two parts. First part, share capital. Second part, pre acquisition reserves. Capital plus reserves existing before date of acquisition should be my total net assets. What is the share capital? 20 lakhs. What is my pre acquisition reserve? We calculated the total pre acquisition reserves of the company as 30,85,000. 30 lakh 85,000. Total is 50,85,000. lakhs 85,000. of net assets. And the Compare it with the cost of 34 lakhs, 
it will result in 16 lakh 85000 as the difference therefore this should result in the amount as bargain purchase bargain purchase in your don't forget now this was cost of control which is actually our step six but here becoming step five because we don't have computation of non-controlling interest last one which is step seven but here it is step six reserves for cbs or reserves in consolidated balance sheet reserves in consolidated balance sheet always start with DEF limited reserves on balance sheet DEF limited reserve on balance sheet date March. what is the value of DEF limited reserve on balance sheet date go back to your question the total other equity including retained earnings and other reserves are how much 24 lakhs plus 5 lakhs 72,000 29 lakhs 72,000 2972. Add that with DEF share in post acquisition reserves of XYZ. Post acquisition reserves of XYZ. What is their share in post acquisition reserves of XYZ? Go back to distribution table. DEF share in post acquisition reserves of XYZ is 3,35,000. So take that. Totally. 33,000. That is the value of reserves in your CBS. Now let's get to the last part, which is the consolidated balance sheet of DEF. Schedule 3, Division 2 balance sheet. So always start with first part. Under assets, first part among that should be non-current assets. Under non-current assets, first of this should be property and include and also should include your land and building both those assets are upward revalued but plant and missionary additional depreciation and revaluation also exists so keep that in your mind clear next one there is no other non-current asset which i find there's no goodwill at all it's only bargain purchase which we have got so let's get into the concept of current assets i'll calculate guys i'll calculate the total of pp revalued by one and a half lakh already existing inventory in the balance sheet was three lakh sixty four for XYZ which is upward val revalued by one lakh fifty so therefore the total value became 5 lakh 14 plus already existing inventory in holding company is 12 lakhs so that makes it 17 lakh 14 thousand what about the other assets other current assets financial assets we have trade pay receivables and cash financial 
financial assets renewables adjustments simple addition is required simple addition is required in both cases what is the value of trade receivables 5 lakh 98 plus 4 lakhs is 9 lakh 98 and 1 lakh 45 plus 80000 is 2 lakh 25 so 9 lakh 98 and 2 lakh 25 that is the end of your assets then come to your second part that is equity and liabilities part 2 equity and liabilities and equity and liabilities start with non current liabilities Sorry, shareholder fund first. Shareholder funds actually share capital are your reserves. And third one, the last one should be your non-controlling interest. No non-controlling interest, so only two items. First one, share capital. Share capital directly pick up whatever share capital you find in holding company as on the balance sheet date, it is 50 lakhs. Second one is regarding R equity. R equity guys, you already calculated a set of reserves to be taken into the balance sheet. As a part of step 6, reserves in the balance sheet are 33 lakhs 7,000. But don't forget one more reserve should be considered, which is 16 lakh 85,000 rupees of capital reserve. So add both of them and you will be arriving at an answer of 49 lakh 92,000. Your reserves, if you add capital reserve, it will be 49 lakh 92,000, which is including the capital reserve as well as your other equity was 33 lakh 7. Plus your bargain purchase, which is recorded as capital reserve, is 16 lakh 85. Combining both of them is 49 lakh 92,000. No other equity, so full stop there. Non current liabilities. Go back to your balance sheet and check if there is any non current liability. We'll also have to write whether it is a financial liability or not. But look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet just mentions financial liabilities as bank overdraft and trade payables both are current liabilities so i'll directly go back to current liabilities now there is a revaluation for trade payables don't forget part a bank OD. part b trade payables Bank OD, no adjustment, simple addition. What is your bank OD amount? 8 lakhs. Your trade payables of the subsidiary are upward revalued by 1 lakh. So instead of 174, it became 274. 274 plus 471 is 7 lakh 45,000. That's it end of balance sheet on the liability side. One item which I did not pick up is property plant and equipment. The value of PP. Get the value of PP, first find out the value of plant and mission, which is the most important. Plant and missionary. First, what is the balance of DEF limited? Second, what is the balance of DEF limited? But there is a revaluation. So what is the revaluation of that? And 
also not be able to reduce depreciation and revaluation. All these are adjusted for the value of plan to be shown in the balance sheet on the closing date. DF, the value of plant and machinery existing is 24 lakhs and other XYZ is 13 lakh 50. 24 lakhs and 13 lakh 50. On balance sheet date, what is upward revaluation? How much upward revaluation happened? 5 lakh 75,000. You can go back to your revaluation reserve and check. Plant and machinery was upward revalued by 575. Depreciation, additional depreciation is 25,000. Deduct that amount. Net effect, as far as your balance sheet is concerned, the total plant and machinery, this is 37, 42, 44, 43. 43 lakhs is plant and machinery and now go to your land and building. Land and building, again write the same way. What is the value of DF? What is the value of DF? And what is the valuation? Land and building in DEF, 15 lakhs, XYZ, 18 lakhs. 18 lakhs, 18 lakhs. Total property plan and equipment. Is 40 lakhs combined, which is 86 lakhs. 43 lakhs of land and building total comes out to 46 lakhs. Sorry, total comes out to 86 lakhs. Go back and place the amount under PP 86 lakhs. Now you will your balance sheet to, should tally in the first go itself. First go, it should tally. 86 lakhs plus 17 lakh 14,000 plus 9 lakh 98,000 plus 2 lakh 25,000. This is 1 crore 15 lakh 37,000. Check about this. 50 lakhs plus 49 lakh 92,000 plus 8 lakhs plus 7 lakh 45,000. It is 1 crore 15 lakhs 37,000. Your balance sheet exactly tallied. There is no difference. Therefore, your answer is absolutely correct. Your answer is bang on. There is no changes. Absolutely right value is what you have got.